Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel in these extraordinary times. I hope you're all keeping safe and well as best you can in the circumstances. I know it's scary and frightening. I know it's very, very difficult for many people and I hope you're able to get the support you need to get you through this. I've been feeling anxious about it just like everybody else. It's only natural for something of this magnitude that we've never experienced before. Um, but we are going to get through it. You know, History and science shows us that we will get through this and that we can beat it. It just takes a bit of time and a bit of effort, but we will get there. And we just all need to stick together and be kind to one another, basically. And social media, of course, helps it massively because we're able to connect with people in a wonderful way. I'm going to keep making videos and blog posts as we go along. There's various ways to chat to people online. So it's great that we have that technology in place at this moment in time to keep the world connected in this way. It's coming very, very handy already. And thank you hugely, of course, to our health workers who are working their absolute asses off, frankly, to keep everybody safe and well, in particular to save lives, which is why we're all doing this. So, you know, they always push themselves to the limits in their daily life anyway, and they're now pushing themselves far beyond anything they've ever done before um, in these circumstances. So huge thanks to them. Also huge thanks to the care workers as well. Huge thanks to all the key workers in other industries, in retail and transport and education and things like that. And a huge thanks to all the volunteers who are helping to support the vulnerable in communities across the UK. You know, if you need someone to support you, then chances are there's a group for it. Look up COVID Mutual Aid, you'll find various groups who can support you, for example. And there's various charities, of course, that still exist to help disabled people and things like that. So there is support out there if you need it. For my part, I don't want to make videos about the health situation. You know, it's very boring and depressing and I want to just use these videos and blog posts to keep myself and you distracted from everything that's going on. I obviously can't tell you about the theatre shows and museums that I've been to, but I'll be able to tell you about other things that I'm enjoying. I might try new things as well. But for this video, I have got some museum and theatre things to tell you about, as well as disability updates and things I've been enjoying on TV and so on. So it's going to be a bumper video because I've combined February and March, seeing as this video was inevitably delayed for obvious reasons with everything else going on. So... I'll crack straight on with it and I hope you enjoy it. So starting off with theatre and I went to see Magic Goes Wrong at the Vaudeville Theatre. And this is a show by a group called Mischief Theatre and they basically do farces. So all the different shows and plays they've done are all about a group of performers trying to put on some kind of stage show and everything goes wrong for them basically as they go along and the disasters keep piling up and they just have to try and get through it as best they can basically. It's really, really funny. It's really well written and choreographed as well. There's a lot of work that goes into shows like this and they've made it into a fine art basically. I've seen the comedy about a bank robbery on stage before I still want to go and see the play that goes wrong and they've also had uh, specials on the TV they've done Christmas Carol goes wrong and Peter Pan goes wrong in the past at Christmas and more recently they've had a sitcom that I mentioned in a moment but Magic Goes Wrong is basically about a group of people who put on a charity fundraiser to raise money for magicians who have been injured in the course of their work. But of course everything goes wrong for them as well, which is really funny. It's been written in collaboration with illusionists Penn and Teller, who many of you will have heard of. So there is some actual kind of real magic in there as well, just not in the way you might expect. We had a good touch tour beforehand as well. We got to see lots of the props and the set and things. And we had audio description during the show as well, of course. And before the touch tour, we even got to meet the cast too. So they lined up in front of the stage and introduced their characters and told them a bit about themselves and it was just nice to chat to them they were really kind to do that especially as it was about an hour before the shows they had to go and get ready so that was really good I really enjoyed that show and I've written a detailed review of my experience for the Access for Us blog which is written by Holly from Life of a Blind Girl another blog worth checking out and a lady called Jess as well who has a photography website and yeah they use that blog to highlight the importance of accessibility in theatres and concerts and the issues that disabled people face so I wrote a post as kind of a positive experience explaining you know what it's like when it does work properly and you know, describing what the touch tour is like and things like that so i'll link to that in the description you can go and check that out and then talking about the sitcom that this mischief theater group has done i've mentioned it before but i've enjoyed watching the goes wrong show on tv which is basically where this amateur dramatics group put on a different play each week a different style and it all goes wrong for them each time and there's again some very clever things in there you know you've got sets on a 90 degree angle or you've got a courtroom that's really really tiny because it wasn't constructed properly and various other things it's really clever and really fun so i've bought the dvd of it now there's only one extra feature on there just a short little feature at talking to you know the cast and the crew about how the show is put together which is interesting not very substantial but it is interesting there was audio description on the main broadcast on tv but that hasn't been put on the dvd as per usual for many tv dvds so that's a shame 
but I'm still glad to have all the shows on DVD nonetheless. And there are subtitles on there for those who need those. So I'm glad I've got the DVD of that in my collection. It's a really good show. And there is going to be a second series as well, which is fantastic because they deserve that. So yeah, we're going to see much more from Mischief Theatre as time goes on, which is great. And then moving on to museums, and I went to a few different museums, all the main ones in the South Kensington area basically, not for any particular tours guided by anybody, but just to look around by myself at a few things. So firstly I went to this Science City exhibition at the Science Museum, which looks at how London became a major global hub between 1550 and 1800. It has a huge number of objects on display there, including things relating to science, trade, navigation, timekeeping and so on. And there's also a very useful large print guide in there, which I used because it contains many of the most significant object labels in each section. Not every single one, because there'd be far too many, but certainly most of the significant ones. And there's one section in the gallery as well where you can touch a few objects, and there's braille labels for them, and audio description tracks recorded by vocalised. So that's a nice section of the exhibition. And overall, the whole thing is very, very interesting, so I enjoyed that. And then I also went to the Victoria and Albert Museum to check out their Laughing Matters exhibition, The State of a Nation. And it looks at the development of British humour, including a look at how we've used comedy in wartime to poke fun at royalty and the government and to mock other cultures and races in times when it was deemed to be acceptable. And of course, to have a laugh at ourselves too, as we often do. It doesn't go too in-depth because it's not a big enough exhibition to do that, but it was fun to spend an hour there. There's quite a lot of interesting items on display. And there's some nice video clips as well from shows like Dad's Army, Fools and Horses, Keep Up Appearances, Yes Minister, Spitting image and so on so it's nice to be able to watch those so i enjoyed that exhibition as a fan of comedy and then also in the vna i had a quick look at some of their buddhism objects as well so it was a nice follow-on to the british library tour i had of their exhibition on that subject so it was nice to look at some of those objects and then I also went to the Natural History Museum and spent a nice long afternoon there looking around quite a bit of it, really. First, I explored their main Hintzy Hall, the main hall, which is huge. If you've ever been in the museum, you'll know how massive that place is. I've been around there a bit before using audio described tours downloaded from their website, but I wanted to look around it in even more detail because there's so much there. So there's obviously the blue whale skeleton hanging up. There's a big giraffe skeleton as well. There's various other exhibits in those arches on the ground floor. The staircase is quite ornate as well, and you've got various statues as you go up there and onto the top floor there's various other exhibits on the top floor as well there's the painted ceiling up in the air that a lot of people don't think of looking at there's so much to see there so i'm really glad i had a proper look around there this time and there's also an audio guide uh, for that whole hall by sir david attenborough online as well which is also worth looking up but I had also gone there to look at a couple of galleries in particular using audio described guides that you can download from the website. I've done this before for a couple of other galleries they do. They don't do audio guides for every exhibition, but a few of them they do. So I wanted to catch up on a couple that I hadn't done yet. So the first was Treasures in the Cadogan Gallery, which has a variety of important objects spanning the entire history of the earth basically including things like fossils skeletons books models and so on there's quite a different variety of things there and the audio guide is really good it's really in depth telling you about each object in detail not just in terms of how it looks describing it but also you know the context behind it and the history so it's really really interesting the audio guide and the website guide because you can see the description labels as well is a little bit out of date because the last object in the exhibition was different i noticed but that doesn't matter it was still very good and then the other exhibition I went to was Images of Nature, which has a selection of photos and artworks from the museum's huge collection. And again, I used the audio guide from the website for that. It doesn't describe every single thing you see there because there's far too many, but it goes through each section with you and describes quite a lot of what's there. So you get a good sense of what's in each section. And again, it's really interesting, lots of context as well as description. And also just a final shout out to the Natural History Museum for an email they did because I'm on their mailing list and they're celebrating World Whale Day and they used the subject line Whale I Never. So kudos to them for that. I appreciated that given the name of my channel, obviously. Then in terms of disability, I was very pleased to be featured on the Undercover Superhero blog by a lady called Amy. She writes about all sorts of disability-related topics, but in particular she has a series called The Reality Of, where various guest contributors write about their conditions. There's quite a variety on there. She's got about 50 posts in that series now, so I was very pleased to be able to contribute my own post about Anna Ridge, you're a nice Agnes, and I got great feedback on it. So thank you to Amy for featuring me, and I encourage people to go and check the post out, of course. I also attended the latest meeting of the Vocalised User Panel, where we talked about the various audio described theatre shows and museum tours we've done it's always great to catch up with other people who enjoy that kind of thing and see what they've been doing and we also heard about other things that the charity is working on so that was a great meeting as usual i also went to another pub social with rnib connect london not our previous location in baker street but this time we went to the doggett's coat and badge pub in blackfriars which i've been to before so i recommended it and we had a great time there it was about eight of us we had some nice food and drink and a good chat of course 
this will be the last social we can do for a while, um, sadly, but when the situation we're currently in resolves itself, we're looking forward to resuming that, so that'll be good. And talking of the RNIB, they've completely overhauled their online talking book library, as many people will know now. They used to use a third-party service called Overdrive, but now they're using their own reading services website that they've developed, which I think is much better. You know, okay, it's going to improve as time goes on, but even so, the way it started now, it seems to work all right. I found it easy enough to use to get books for mum. On the computer, you can just get books directly through the website. On smartphones and tablets, things like that, you can use the Dolphin Easy Reader app. Audio books are supplied in DAISY format as well, so if you use that kind of system, then you've got the full navigation capability of that now. But you can also listen to the main audio files on a regular MP3 player if you prefer. And there's also some electronic Braille titles on there that they're expanding, and they're looking at adding resources for musicians and the ability to stream to smart speakers. So it's still a work in progress to some extent, but they've got the basics there, and they're just going to keep improving it based on feedback and other things they want to add. So it'll be interesting to see how the site develops. So then moving on to things I've been watching and I've been enjoying the 12th series of Doctor Who. Series 11 was good, but I think series 12 has been a real step up. It's been much more intense, much more action and big twists. And you've had the returns of people like the Master and the Cybermen and Captain Jack, who I hope reappears for longer than just a cameo in future. We've had some great two-part stories and the finale was incredible. There are plans for a Christmas special, if they're able to film it, that is, of course. And a 13th series is coming as well, so I'm looking forward to that. And I've also bought the Blu-ray Stillbook for series 5. I did have the ordinary Blu-ray edition before, but I'm upgrading to still books as they become available because they do look really nice on the shelf. And it's got the same extra features as before, so there's nothing particularly new there, but they are nice sets to have. But in particular, the big sci-fi thing I've been watching lately is The X-Files. It's been ages since I've watched it. You know, I did see some of it when I was a teenager around like 20 years ago, so I don't really remember it in any detail other than who the main characters are and the basic premise of the show. So it all feels new to me now because watching the episodes back, I just don't remember them. So I saw it was available to watch for free as part of my Amazon Prime Video subscription so I thought I'd give it a go and I got hooked into it again and so after watching a couple of seasons online I thought I'd just go and get the box set it's nice and cheap it works out about a quid per disc which is very very reasonable and I also got the first and second movies as well because obviously it's important to watch those I'll watch those at the relevant points in between seasons later on but yeah I'm enjoying going through that at the moment it's just a really great series there's a nice variety of storylines you know you've got the monster of the week episodes there's some humorous episodes and you've got the big episodes that build up the mythology of the show which I know gets quite complicated as it goes along more and more and yeah it's just good fun I like the whole variety of it so that's great and also there's extra features you know like interviews commentaries featurettes things like that both for individual episodes you get specific extras and then there's also extras applicable to the whole seasons like documentaries and gag reels and things like that so there's a lot to get through there at the time of recording I'm currently nearly at the end of season three so I've got quite a lot to get through there's 11 seasons altogether plus the movies so these are going to keep me going for a while which which in the circumstance this is very very welcome i've also bought the soundtrack album for the series as well online because mark snow's score is very atmospheric and has a lot of excitement to the episodes so it's great to have the music from the early seasons there including the full version of the theme tune called materia primoris it's just a legendary theme tune so you know it's nice to have the full version of it I've also got the soundtrack album for the first film as well as it happens. I don't know if I ever actually saw the film itself. I may well have done, but it's a good album. You know, the first half is better than the second half, I would say, but it is a good album overall. And there's also a little Easter egg in the last track as well if you fast forward to the 10-13 mark. So I've had that in my collection for quite some time. And when I get around to watching the second film, I'll get the soundtrack for that as well, but I won't bother getting that too early. I know there are a couple of other related shows as well called Millennium and The Known Gunman, neither of which were as successful as The X-Files, so they were cancelled and they each had a kind of conclusion within X-Files episodes to try and kind of wrap them up. So I might try those series one day, but I'm not in any rush to. I'm quite happy to go through The X-Files as it is for now. Beyond that, in terms of other dramas, I've watched series one of Afterlife on Netflix, which is written by and stars Ricky Gervais. It's not for everyone because some of it is quite offensive, but there's a reason for the fact that it is like that because Ricky's character, Tony, has his life turned upside down when his wife dies and he considers ending it all himself as a result. But instead of succumbing to that, he decides to basically punish everyone in the world around him by saying and doing whatever he likes. doesn't matter how offensive it is. It's about a man who's in a crisis, basically. You know, his mind has completely changed and it's about people around him trying to rescue him, basically, from this state he's got himself in. So although there's funny moments in terms of the things he says to other people, there is a very 
kind of dark, thought-provoking, sad side to it as well, really. So it's actually really well written. And there's a second series coming on April the 24th, so I'm going to watch that. I won't get it on DVD, but it's the sort of thing that's interesting to watch online because I enjoyed it more than I expected to. And then I've also been watching the new fifth season of Outlander on Amazon as well. I'm glad that's back again. It is as good as always. The storylines are interesting as usual, and the visuals and the music are as lush as always, including yet another wonderful iteration of the theme tune. I don't know how they keep coming up with new versions of the theme tune every time, but they do it wonderfully. So I'm looking forward to watching the remaining episodes of that. In terms of documentaries, I recommend Secrets of the Museum, which is a behind-the-scenes look at the Victoria and Albert Museum, which shows just how much hard work is involved in acquiring and displaying and maintaining their objects, and there's a clear passion that all the people working there have for what they do so it's really well worth looking at you know it's nice to see some objects from exhibitions that I've been to and various other things so it's been nice to get that insight and I also enjoyed watching an episode of the BBC current affairs documentary series Panorama called Spying on the Scammers and this came about from the work of Jim Browning another YouTuber who exposes scammers and the way they work by basically hacking the connection so when they connect to him as they try to do to people's computers he has the facility to hack back into their machines as well in return which is illegal it's important to say but it allows them to expose their methods and share their information it really does help to raise awareness so it's quite important to watch these videos you can see just how devious they are and in this particular case he hacked into a system of these particular scammers not just into their network but he managed to get into their cctv system as well and really get a good insight into their office environment and he tried to get them taken down by going to the authorities and things as you should do but nothing was happening so he went to the media with it instead and got the bbc to feature his work and they were kind of exposed on the panorama documentary which is really interesting to watch but Jim has also published his own four-part video series going into great detail about these people so it's really interesting to watch that and in terms of comedy and entertainment I enjoyed the remaining episodes in the latest series of Would I Lie to You they had two editions of Unseen Material rather than one like they usually do and then also 8 out of 10 Cats does Countdown as well that's been great fun as usual both of those series have had episodes featuring blind comedian Chris McCausland as well which is great because he's very funny and then I've also been enjoying The Last Leg and Anton Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway as per usual obviously the unusual thing this time is that they've had to produce their most recent episode without studio audiences for the first time in their history which is really weird and it's not something you want them to do but they made it work as well you know they made the most of the situation and it was great that they actually made the effort even with a reduced crew to put the shows out you know both very entertaining both much needed escapism at the moment and I was also delighted to see that people were celebrating the birthday of the late great Rick Mayle recently as well who would have been 62 on the 7th of March it was a great loss to the comedy world so I thought I'd take the opportunity to watch a couple of his things online that actually I'd never got around to before I checked out a sitcom called Believe Nothing which I hadn't seen before featuring him in the role of a professor who is the cleverest man in Britain and he's consulted by the government but he's also part of a group that controls everything in the world basically and it's written by Morris Graham and Lawrence Marks who also wrote The New Statesman which had Rick Mayle in the lead role but The New Statesman is better Believe Nothing is a okay but it's not as good it wasn't as successful but it still has funny moments and i still felt like i wanted to keep it so i have bought the dvd now the dvd has all the episodes plus some entertaining interviews and outtakes as well the interviews are a little bit awkward in the sense that you have to kind of click each question in turn you can't just watch each interview as a continuous sequence which is a little bit silly really but it's still good to watch them you know the rick Mayo interview in particular is very good he's his typical self and this was after his accident as well his big quad bike accident so some references to that which are quite interesting and the outtakes are fun as well because you know Rick's always good when he uh, fluffs up and I also then watched his film Drop Dead Fred where Rick plays this manic invisible friend to a young lady causing chaos wherever she goes it's typical Rick if you like him in things like Bottom and The Young Ones he really has fun in that film it's really funny I've ordered the Blu-ray for that there's lots of extras on there like a commentary and interviews and deleted scenes and an alternate ending so Drop Dead Fred is really good it's a really good fun film if you like Rick Mayle then you'll enjoy that but then Drop Dead Fred isn't the only movie I've seen recently I've also watched various others too so I watched the first three films in the Jumanji franchise. Jumanji I've seen before as a kid. It's a classic film starring the late, great Robin Williams, of course. But I've never seen the sequels before. There's a Thura, a space adventure, and Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. So I didn't know what to expect for them, especially as Robin Williams wasn't in them. But they're actually quite good, you know, they're actually good fun. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle in particular I liked because A, it's quite a clever twist on the theme, turning it into a video game rather than a board game. It also features Karen Gillan from Doctor Who, which was quite a nice surprise, and Dwayne Johnson as well, the rock he's in it and all the actors in that film are good so i enjoyed that and there's been a sequel more recently as well called the next level which again features the cast from the third film welcome to the jungle so again karen gillen's back and i'm looking forward to seeing that i haven't watched it yet but when it comes online i will certainly check that out 
And then I've also watched all five horror films in the Final Destination franchise, all of which have basically the same plot, but they're all entertaining. The main character in each film has a premonition of a major catastrophe that kills them and other people around them, including friends and bystanders. So they're able to rescue people by getting them out of the way before the accident happens. But death doesn't appreciate being cheated. So all these people that were rescued then end up dying in freak accidents one after the other. And it's up to the main character to try and find a way to stop it happening if they can. But it's the accidents that are the focus of the films, basically. You know, they're all very gory but they're all very entertaining if you like that kind of thing they're very creative and often very elaborate there's chain reactions that go on and things and often you'll be kind of tricked into thinking they're going to die one way and then something else comes along you know there's lots of little red herrings in there so it's good fun and then also in terms of horror i watched zombie land which is a horror comedy i noticed this because the sequel which came out last year was trending that's called double tap which i haven't seen yet but again when that comes online i will certainly check that out but yeah zombie land is very good it's basically about a group of people who take a trip across america to find shelter from this zombie apocalypse that they've survived so far and there's lots of funny moments in there so that's a good film and with all these films you know zombie land final destination jumanji i've got no plans to actually buy them on dvd or blu-ray but they were fun to watch you know it's nice to uh, have a bit of escapism with things like that and then just to mention a few music releases i bought recently these are kind of reissues of old material um, so i bought queen's rock in rio concert from 1985 which is a brilliant concert and this wasn't released by queen themselves but by another record label as it was originally a radio broadcast the only issue with the cd is that the we will rock you track near the end skips all the way through which appears to be an issue on everyone's copy which is a shame but i've replaced that with the audio from queen's video on their own youtube channel of that song from the concert which appears to be nice clean audio so i've got that anyway and then i've also bought the latest deluxe reissue to some status quo's old albums which they've been releasing every so often and these ones are thirsty work perfect remedy and rock till you drop and as usual they've got b-sides and outtakes and live tracks and things like that as bonuses so they're all really good to have it's great to have experience expanded edition to those albums in my collection and that's it that's the end of my february and march 2020 favorites i hope you found that interesting and enjoyable and a good distraction clearly going forward i'm not going to be able to do videos like that because i won't have as much to tell you about but i will keep you updated at regular intervals with how i'm doing and things that i've been enjoying it just depends on circumstances and how much i feel i have to talk about and so on but i will keep you posted every so often with how i'm doing but i also want to do other videos and blog posts to fill the gap if i can so i've got ideas for things i can do and there's ideas for things I might want to try and get into while I'm at home. So things like gaming, I haven't really done much of that for a while. So I'll have time to do that. And audiobooks, I'll try and devote more time to that perhaps. But we'll see. I've got no definite plan yet. I just wanted to get this video out of the way really so I could clear the slate and just you know think then afresh about what I'm going to do. I'm open to suggestions from you guys about things you might want to see as well. So we'll just see how it goes basically. It's obviously a very uncertain time for everybody at the moment. So I don't want to promise anything, but I will certainly get some content out there. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel as usual so you can see what content I do post in the weeks and months ahead. And above all, please stay safe, stay well, look after your loved ones. As I say, I know it's difficult, but we are going to get through this all together. And I will see you for another video very soon. Bye.